Hey everybody, our Q&A continues. We had another great question just come in from Brandon Ferber. I hope that's how you pronounce your name. I'm doing my best. Um, great question, Brandon. Um, and the gist of it was, and I, we'll cover this in depth. We can do a whole video on, on this type of thing. But, but the gist of your question um, was, uh, you're asking on the Wayman banjo. This is the Luscom I've got right here. The Wayman's over here somewhere, but on the Wayman is that steel or nylon, and those are nylon strings, or steel strings. Those are steel strings on the Wayman, and those are just standard um, medium gauge, cheap steel strings um, on that. And really the reason, be the only reason for that being is I, I always preferred nylon. When this, when I figured out that this instrument was better with nylon, this Luscombe, I strung it with nylon and I've always kept nylon or gut on it. I had gut for a while, but I would string nylon on it always. Um, cause it, I think that the nylon strings are better. That's for, for what I, you know, like I said in the last question, I'm more of a solo player anyhow. And I think for solo traditional banjo playing, Just that sounds like a banjo to me, like an old banjo. Oh yeah, thank you, Robin, my my assistant here. <laughs> Robin is who films, uh, does all the close uh, handheld stuff, and uh, she shouted out that question to me just a minute ago as I was setting up the camera. But so this is the Wayman and uh, steel strings on the Wayman. A little bit of marching through Georgia for, for you as we're sitting here in Georgia on this gloomy afternoon. So this is the Wayman, it's got Medium gauge steel strings. I like the, the phosphor bronze strings and stuff, but to be honest with you guys nowadays, I order my strings, usually I order them from elderly.com. And they, I usually get the cheapest, the more you buy, the cheaper they make them. So I usually buy the cheapest strings I can get. So on the Wayman, I put the cheapest steel, medium gauge steel strings I can find. And then on the Luscom, I put the cheapest nylon medium or yeah medium nylon gauge uh, strings on it that I can find whatever's on elderly.com is what I usually do guys they're a good company they've been around forever I don't think they're screwing anybody over so if you guys know of a better place where I should get my strings from holler at me because I mean the local local music store is maybe 20 minutes from me anyhow and it's more of a tourist shop so I'm not buying strings at that rate um, so what, what was the rest of Brandon's question? He always said, what, and what do I like, like nylon or steel in general? I think I answered that. I would prefer nylon. Gut are the best, but y'all, we don't need to be killing these animals for, for gut strings and stuff. And, and the gut, the gut strings nowadays, they're not as good as what they were. If anybody knows of a good source for gut strings, let me know. Cause last few pairs of gut strings I bought were a rip off. They didn't last. They, they were not good. And gut strings, a good set of gut strings should last you about a year, I'd say at least, before they fall apart on you. Gut is, is should be really good strings. So if, if you got gut strings that aren't lasting you a year, you uh, probably got ripped off. That's what happened to me. Um, and then the other question that Brandon had, the general gist of that was if I was playing with somebody and they wanted to go to this... Uh, they wanted to go up to detuning. Well, of course, that's a common thing that happens all the time. And as you guys know, I don't generally play with people a whole lot. Um, but what would I do? Would I, would I capo up to the seventh fret and play a banjo a five string uke to accompany that, that violin player or whatever, or the singer? Or would I just play my, my chords, my D and my D chords out of the G tuning? I would do the latter. And there's a couple reasons for that. The main reason would be that I do not own a capo, guys. There is no railroad spike on this 100-plus-year-old 
priceless antique instrument. And I didn't put a capo on it. I don't like capoing up. I never have. I'm sorry. Um, I would do that. I would do that. My one advice, if you guys want it, if you, if you, you should, you know, a capo is a good thing to have. Don't be bad like me and throw your capo out. I need to get my capo back. And when I do that, I'm going to get a guitar capo. Make sure you get a flat, they, you know, guitar capos come arched and they come flat. Make sure you get a flat, straight guitar capo, the, the cheap scissor one that you just clamp on. That's the best kind to get. There's no reason to buy a banjo capo when you can buy a cheap guitar capo that you can use on a guitar and a banjo. And a banjo capo is only good for a banjo. So just get you a cheap, straight guitar capo and play with that. And, uh, you know, put a railroad spike in your banjo if you want. I don't, so that's my choice. Um, and yeah, in that setting, I answered that question. Uh, in that situation, I would just noodle, I would just stay in the background and be like... <laughs> keep the rhythm going and just do the low chords. That's what I would do. Um, I think that's that's good for now on that one, y'all. I'm going to turn this off and uh, I will see you later. Thank you everybody for your continued support. I cannot tell you how much we appreciate it here. It is helping us a lot. Thank you.